So what is Galaxy Season? Hey folks, this is Ray from Ray's Astrophotography channel. You can clearly see the difference, right? Hi there, wonderful Astro person. Welcome back to the Astro Forum channel and thanks for tuning in. In this video, I will get into Galaxy Season. I'll talk about what Galaxy Season is and I'll provide you with some tips on how to photograph some of these wonderful galaxies that are out there in our universe. Also, I have a special guest. Hey folks, this is Ray from Ray's Astrophotography channel. Ray's a real YouTube buddy of mine and he's a very experienced galaxy and comet astrophotographer. Please check out his channel, Ray's Astrophotography, where you will find lots of live sessions and beautiful pictures of the night sky. We will both show our astro gear setup for galaxy season and share some tips on how to photograph some of these awesome galaxies. So let's dive right in. So what is galaxy season? If you're not an astrophotographer, you'll probably think about our very own galaxy, the Milky Way, or our closest neighbor, the Andromeda galaxy. Well, interestingly, both of these targets are not visible during galaxy season. In the nerdy world of astrophotographers, galaxy season refers to the period from March until mid-May when our Milky Way is actually very close to the horizon. And this gives us the unique opportunity to look beyond our Milky Way into deep space, where lots of amazing galaxies that are millions of light years away can be observed and photographed. My astro friend Mac Murdoch from OPT made an awesome YouTube video where he shows 15 beautiful galaxies you can capture. I'll link to that video in the description below and I highly recommend you check that out. So at this point of the video some of my astro friends on YouTube would ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel but I won't do that. In the words of Dylan O'Donnell let's first watch the content. There are several things to take into account when you're going to photograph galaxies. First of all <laughs> galaxies are far far away. Literally millions of light years away. As a consequence, most galaxies they will appear as pretty small objects in the night sky. And this means that you'll need a telescope with a long focal length of at least about 1000 mm or even longer in order to take detailed pictures of these small galaxies in deep space. So I generally use either a SCT telescope or a RASA telescope to take the galaxies. If the galaxy is big enough, I would take the picture with my RASA, but most of the galaxies are very small. So I usually use like the long focal length telescopes. I took this picture of M51, the Whirlpool Galaxy, with a 500 millimeter telescope last year and with a 1500 millimeter HHD telescope this year. You can clearly see the difference, right? If you have a shorter focal length telescope, however, you can still take beautiful wide field images of multiple galaxies together, such as Bose galaxies M81 and M82, uh, the Mercurian's chain or the Leo triplet. So question of the day, what galaxy or galaxies do you want me to image during galaxy season or what galaxies are you going to image yourself? Please let me know in the comment section down below so we can get into a conversation. Thanks! So there's also some good news. Galaxies are generally pretty bright objects in the night sky as they contain millions of stars. So this means that you don't necessarily need a very long exposure time to capture these amazing galaxies. Usually taking one to two minute pictures is enough to image these bright objects. Also depending on your F ratio, the lower the better. Uh, the second piece of good news is that most galaxies are so-called broadband targets. And this means that you can use a regular color camera or regular RGB filters if you have a mono camera to image these galaxies. Most of the galaxies are in broadband. When they say broadband, we mean you can just use a cell phone or a one-shot color to take a picture. First tip, if you are a beginner, just use one-shot color to take pictures of galaxies. You don't need to use filters except IR UV cut filter for improving the contrast. I use the two inch IR UV cut filter from Bader. One potential downside is that if you live under suburban or urban skies like me, <laughs> you're going to pick up a lot of light pollution from your neighbors, street lights and industrial areas as well. If that's the case, you could try to use a broadband light pollution filter to diminish the light pollution that ends up in your picture. 
or you can take your car and leave your city. The best filter is still the gas filter, although most cars will run on electricity in the near future. So one final tip I have for you is to also optionally use an H-Alpha filter. You're probably familiar with the Orion Nebula, one of the most beautiful massive star producing nebulas in our own Milky Way. Most galaxies in deep space contain many of those star formation regions. If you have an H-Alpha filter and you take longer exposures, you'll be able to identify these star formation regions within distant galaxies. For example, I took this H-Alpha picture of M51 and I incorporated it into my final image. You can clearly identify the red dots in the picture. Those are the many rich star formation regions in the Whirlpool galaxy. The galaxy is made up of so many stars, millions and millions of stars. So the focus is very important. For you to get the best focus, your telescope should be very well collimated. So make sure your telescope is very well collimated so that you can get the best focus. Focus itself, like basically make sure you have a good focus, right? The way in SCTs I would focus normally is in the beginning of my routine, I keep the telescope upside down, like almost this way, right? So facing up, the telescope is facing up all the way towards the meridian, right? And once if it is facing the meridian, the gravity will do the work. The primary mirror is going to get pulled down and you can do your focusing. If you have mirror locks, most edge scopes do. And if you lock your mirror at that time, you will have a better focus than focusing any other way. I think this is the best way to do it. Again, congratulations for Astro Forum and his subscribers. Clear skies and peace. So in my next video, I'll show you how I set up my Astro gear and what software I use to identify and photograph galaxies in deep space during galaxy season. If you have any kind of questions, don't hesitate and write them in the comment section below. And please consider to like the video and subscribe to the channel. And as always, I wish you Clear skies.